started. Yeah. Time to hey, thank y'all for taking some time today. My name is Aaron Wood. I'm with uh, STS Coatings. Um, I handle the, the sales application and the technical side of uh, our liquid applied air barriers. And what we hope to do today, can everybody hear me? Sorry, I'm trying to scream. I know y'all just had a presentation over some flashings, so I kind of wanted to show you an integrated assembly short of the insulation and maybe highlight some of the things that y'all have seen in there with the larger scale version. So first, y'all been talking about flashings all morning. This is actually a copper laminated flashing that was installed with a turn bar. And to help shed and deflect water, we use the polyether sealant against the substrate to kick out water as it can't be, okay? Secondly, the flashing is adhered to the slab with the same adhesive to hold it in place during construction. Some of y'all might have been out on a job site and seen this stuff flapping in the wind, getting torn up. This reduces that impact. We also can use the same membrane flashing for a lintel surface. And again, install with the turn bar and it can't be the polyether sealant to kick it over. You'll notice our window detail, we use what we refer to as a transition membrane. The transition membrane turns from the exterior of your, your sheathing into the rough opening. And by doing that, it allows your windows to set in and have something a sound surface to cough to, both on the inside and the outside exterior face of it. In a chip application, it reduces the ability of a cut gypsum to absorb water vapor and or hold it together. Does that make sense? So what you've got is a full assembly short of a change of substrate, where again we would use a transition membrane to make that interchange and interface. Had a project where you may use two different manufacturers. It has occurred. Let's use a below grade scenario, but this could be applicable for it. If I had a below grade membrane coming up a slab tying into a sheathing wall, I could use a transition membrane to segregate those two dissimilar materials while still maintaining the integrity of the system. Does that make sense? Okay. What you see on the chip wall anywhere there's a board to board joint we want to reduce the potential deflection that could occur there from building movement it's a fatigue area so the way we accommodate that in our assembly is again with the polyether sealant we've got an applicator tip that comes in the packaging so the contractor can actually come up and seal a board to board joint One smooth pass, allowing to have reduced tension on those board-to-board -board joints. Depending on the assembly and also sometimes the testing, we may use that same sealant in our brick lug to sheathing wall. That's an area of concern for us in terms of air leakage and reduction in moisture content. If it's tested to ASTM 2357 standards, this is a detail that you're going to see quite a bit. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do some installations and some, some of the preparatory work out in front of it. And I'll be walking y'all through that, okay? <coughs> the wall transition is a very important transition to make. Thank you, Roy. Uh, depending on what type of system you're using, you know, you've got an asphaltic, a TPO, or an APP up there, in some capacity, you need to transition that into it with your air barrier system. Again, I you typically fall back on a transition membrane to make that break and to give you a, a, a monolithic surface, if you will, shedding downward. But again, a transition membrane. Every manufacturer's got one. This is how you'll change from dissimilar materials or dissimilar substrates. Y'all ready? Let's go ahead and prime our window open. Now all transition membranes are gonna require the use of a primer. But 
majority of them are solvent borne. There are a few waterborne primers that are out there and applicable. But anytime you're trying to adhere to a porous substrate such as CMU or to a face surface like GIF, it's very important to reduce the construction dust, debris that is actually going to those surfaces. And we use that with the aid of a primer. Now you'll notice this is just one penetration. It could be a junction box or PVC. It could be any penetration out there. Notice how I sealed it to the sheathing wall with the liquid tape. That helps reduce some of the deflection. It gives it a bond surface already. And then I'm going to belt and suspend it with the aid of a transition membrane. One of the things that y'all might be curious about, all these details, in addition to the additional physical properties by the ABAA, all of the details are also approved by the Air Barrier Association. So you've got an independent agency working you all the way down the line from initial testing to a system testing to an approval and to an approval even of the details. So you've got checks and balances all the way through this process if it's an ABAA evaluated system. With this transition membrane detail in a window, it's just like any other window detail. We're going to start at the bottom seal and work our way up to the top, shedding water downward. I like to put what's referred to as a football. If any of you have done work with them single ply membranes, y'all have seen this applied in the field. But a football can accommodate this corner bridge and make sure when he comes down with his side laps, he's got that corner sealed up and intersected well. Any questions so far? It's kind of a slow go now. Um, <coughs> even this is part of the approval process, the BP, the butyl primer, that's also part of the approval process that the other thing goes through the AA. So what I'm saying is you can't mix and match your materials, you can't pick up a uh, Tamco primer and use it with a peel and stick membrane from Manville on somebody else's air barrier system. Those days are gone. Um, RGB has done a lot of these down here. And if, if you ask the, the, one of the owners of their company, Jesse, this has made his life easier on many cases and a little bit tougher in some others. But it's all one system, one source of responsibility, avoids all performance, all compatibility problems. And with that, and in that vein, uh, an expansion joint is an example into your CMU backup wall. Within our system, we approved only certain applications with our sealant. So I wouldn't want to bring in another manufacturer and, and allow that sealant to be sealed up as an example with the, with the urethane. Because I, I haven't tested with it, you know, similar materials may cause some issues later on down the road. We've tested with these and they're part of the system and the assemblies. Much like a roof. And they're doing the same thing with that window opening as we've done here. Notice on the window opening, they're shingling everything. And that is to shed the water down. Once again, only at uh, probably the hurricane, that's later by this water go up hill. But you have to shingle these materials on your window. Yes, yes. But notice that through wall flashing is not part of this. You've got to use that system through wall flashing comes in later. Okay? Your lentils are You have to seal the window just as they're doing here with another strip across the top for the air barrier performance. For the 
the purpose of today's exercise in time, we didn't have a chance to, to actually apply our air barrier on the CMU behind our flashing. But the flashes, the through walls will be installed after your membrane is done its entirety. This should be one of the last things that are installed. And if you notice, this is turn barred in like we spoke about in our presentation. It's not tucked in. It's termination barred in. You can't put all this air barrier material up here and then cut into it and expect it to perform. So that's a big change in the scheduling aspect of all this. Yes. I have no problem with y'all doing that, but that's wrong. Um, I think it's a great detail. You can get it done in the field, do it. The question was, should there be a canned strip of mortar at the bottom to provide more gravity drainage? The answer is yes, if you can get it, if you specify it that way. Great idea. Is it done in the field? Well, I have a question. I thought UT systems didn't allow transition strips on blocks. I'm sorry? I thought UT systems didn't allow transition strips on blocks because if you nail it, you crack the block and water penetrates under. Is that correct? No. Remember now, if you cut that open, the air barrier, the question is penetrating the wall. And the UT systems, you were saying? They didn't allow transition strips. And they did it to the pickle facility already because that, that used to be true. The worry was the block would crack. We've seen lesser quality blocks crack on occasion. We've not seen innovative blocks crack at this time. And also with the advent of the air barriers, the advent of the air, where's David? Okay. Uh, with the advent of the air barriers, you've got to go with a surface mount. And remember, we talked about that fastener sealability issue also. So when that pin goes in, you're still sealed around it, and that's part of the air barrier test. So they detailed out this window, and now we're going to do our pipe junction. So the way I actually like to do this is I've sealed it with my liquid tape. I'm going to come back and install a transition. Notice I did a simple X relief. It's like a roofing repair. gives us a good seal around your penetrations. Uh, testing and research has found that our penetrations through our assemblies are the biggest source of air leakage. So that's the one way to reduce or limit that capacity. In the ASTM 2357 testing, your penetrations are allowed to leak 10% more than the wall. So if the wall rating is 0 .004 CFM per square foot, Start penetrations are allowed to be 0 0.0044. They recognize the criticality of that detail, but no more than 10% deviation. What's going through the audience now is called a mill gauge. Some of you have seen them. They're uh, the only resource we have for, for evaluating the mill thickness, the, the quality on the terms of thickness of application we have while the materials are wet. What you simply do each manufacturer is qualified their mill thickness going on wet. You can actually lay this card into the surface, just give it a little bit of a twist. And what you'd anticipate seeing is a little tick mark, just a bare tick mark on whatever mill thickness is required, okay? So in our capacity today for our acrylic, which is the light blue, I want to see 40 mils. For the asphaltic material, the black we're going to install, I want to see 60 mils. And it's just a little tick mark. Now one thing that's repeatedly come up as I've come down to the valley is so much of our, our backup wall is CMU. After the fact, after this material is dried, I can't come back and do a test with a wet mill gauge. It's dry. Okay? The only source I have for a dry mill gauge or dry thickness. Oh, over here. Over here. 
is a caliper cover. And these calipers can give me the desired dry film thickness weeks, days, months later. But the problem with CMU is I can't come in here and cut this off. It's actually soaked into the pen, the, the holes, the porosity of the block enables the material to flow into. So this dry mill gauge is really only acceptable on a chip sheet. I can come in here and cut it out. And I can actually peel the facer off of it. And what I'm left with is a sample of the thickness of the materials that we're working with. And then I can calc it out and know exactly what we installed, okay? On a day-to-day -day process, the best thing to have out there at the superintendent level, at the architect level, and in the contractor's hands are the mill gates. And every manufacturer passes these things out by the gross. They're everywhere you could want them. Uh, roofing distribution keeps them around for roof coatings. Innovative block keeps them around for our products and other products. Waterproofing supply. And contractors will keep them on hand at their offices so their guys in the field can have them. That, that caliper looks uh, pretty familiar. Stole it. Yeah. Answer my question. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to fire up a rig and we're going to spray the acrylic version onto the CMU wall. It's going to be pretty loud and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop them at certain intervals and show you all how to read these cards. So you may want to come up in groups and kind of circle back around. After that we're actually going to roll on the asphaltic material and you all kind of see the differences in the technology. Okay? One thing that we try to do, uh, and you're going to see more of it as these assemblies develop, and responsibility comes to us as a manufacturer to train and certify contractors. So that's what I spend a lot of my time doing is out in the field showing these guys how to install these products and make sure they know what's going on with them. One of the things in your specifications, you will note that you cannot just specify one thickness of material. The thickness of material is determined by the level or the thickness of material to pass the test. Some people, like the Wall Guardian product, are 40 mils thick or two and a half gallons per 100 square foot. A WR Grace product is 90 mils thick to achieve the same performance. So don't write a prescriptive specification or think that because you used 40 mils on the last job, you need to use 40 mils on this job with another manufacturer. The passing of the test and the engineering performance is very specific to the engineering of that particular air barrier system. One thing, one thing I want to point out to y'all, I've been on jobs where I've seen your transit or transition membranes installed after the air barrier has been installed. Y'all notice that we primed it with an, a, a solvent-based primer. The transition membrane, part of its sequencing, we want to install that directly to whatever sheathing or backup wall we've got. This is not going to be installed after the fact. So give your waterproofers time to get out there and sequence the schedules on these. It's really important is getting, in, getting these in at the right time. Start over here. You see the little tick marks? 35, 40, 45. I'm shooting for 40 mils. And he's actually got up to 45 mils. Okay? It's just a little tick mark on the edge of the, the material uh, the edge of the card. 
Can y'all see how that works? Just a little tick mark on it. We don't need it up here like this. This sits deeper into the material than we can All I want is a one minute tape mark on the 45 foot. 40 is what we're trying to achieve. And this is Right. Would anybody like to go up there and try the garden? Anybody? So what I like to do is when these guys are out in the field, about every 100 feet, 10 by 10 area, the technician's actually checking his is mill thick. Now they may stretch it out and do a couple of 300 feet at a time, but they're constantly trying to check to evaluate. After a while, the technicians just so good at it, they know by feel, and they're putting it on as desired. But this is a good backup and verification for you. Notice that you have a monolithic film, a monolithic air barrier from your flashing, through all flashing, to your window penetrations. Everything is now sealed. Same way up at the roof line. There will be a transition membrane come down made by the air barrier manufacturer, not the roof line. Made by and tie all this together. Complete shell, one monolithic envelope system. One thing y'all can do, and I'm sorry to jump back, but your contractors, the subs, can actually show their mill thickness on their as built so that you can see the progression throughout the day. I know Jesse's had me come down a couple of times to check mill thickness, but they had done you know this elevation last week. And all it takes is just writing it down on the as built and then the GC and, and the architect and the owner can know that it was installed according to plan. Is there back rolling or? You can. Back rolling is a good question. Notice Flash some material here a little bit earlier in the day. Some material you're going to get varies in ferocity, right? So what I want to try to do is take my 40 mils, and then I can come back in and back row, which is pressing the material in to the CMU backup wall. What I'm looking for is a pinhole-free surface. You walk the job, you walk the site, you're going to see a pinhole-free surface. So back rolling can and sometimes it's completely necessary. I'm actually dry rolling it a little bit. You'll want it wetter than that. But then he checked, he had 40 mils going on. Now he's depressed it in there. He's got a pinhole free surface. Five minutes. All right, let's go ahead and get the And what is it that would go under the flashing? You mentioned it earlier. It's, it's for the purposes of today's demonstration, we didn't, we didn't have a chance to get a high wall, maybe install a fraction of the But the air barrier would actually go all the way down from the brick but prior to the contractors, especially when we're talking about asphaltic versions of air barriers. They tend to slump, they're very heavy, which makes them, you know, the viscosity of them. So you'll watch and notice it's... So a lot of times we'll install it in multiple coats, yes. one or two coats, preferably one times money to contract to the scheduling on the job. 
But notice how soon he's already back in the bucket. He didn't try to paint this out. What do you call it, Danny? Chupa. Chapapote. Yes. This is Both not chapapote. Acrylics are pretty easy. Would that have been the same had he had been applying it to the same new one? The spring? No. If he had been rolling it, rolling it, yeah. and the fact that it's asphalted to make, make the issues. And this is the most popular version that, that we supply. Okay? The material, the material is the only price that you want. FW100. where this green is going. Both of these are uh, water-based materials, no solvent. The blue one has 25% recycled content. Both passed all the ASTM testing, all the ABAA evaluations. This is an asphaltic-based material, and we've already discussed the NFPA 285 test. That goes on 60 mils thick. This goes on 40. It's just about the same uh, square foot cost between the materials. So you have choices to make. Notice how I loaded this up really, really heavy now when I'm trying to ro roll it. And what you'll see on the job side if that occurs is a little sagging and slumping. That's not a, a problem for, on the installation side, it's just working with the material. Both of these materials can be exposed for six months, which gets us back to the dry in time for the contractors for the building and allows you to do other things and work inside. Do we need to go inside and feed ourselves?